So with bottle babies, there's a bit to expect. You might have a couple questions and if you've never done it before, it may sound, you know, lots of cute and fun and happiness and it definitely is. But these guys also are very time consuming and they do require a lot of care. When we get bottle babies into the shelter and by bottle babies, I mean kittens who are not able to eat on their own. Typically we're looking at under four weeks of age for these guys. And these are kittens that require around the clock care. When they do come into the shelter, they do have to go into foster care immediately. For those of you who are current fosters with us, you will see those emails that I send out every couple, a couple times a week that mention that we have bottle baby kittens in need of placement. Um, these aren't animals that we can leave here at the shelter overnight because they simply can't survive. It is more time consuming and intensive to foster bottle babies than it is fostering adult animals. Because again, you're looking at round the clock care and you're looking at getting up every few hours. Um, they're more prone to being sick sometimes. And sometimes there are problems with these kittens um, that even if they're young and um, seem healthy at the time, um, they are more prone to developing illnesses and sickness because they only have um, very little immunity, and now they don't have moms, so they're even more prone to illness, um, particularly if they, we get bottle babies in that are very um, young, particularly like under a week old. So that's why it's so vital to have you guys and for you guys to have this training so that we are able to properly care for these kittens and give them the best chance at life. So we are going to talk about the growth stages of kittens first because it's important to know how old your kittens are when you get them because that does kind of change the care that they need or the frequency of the care they need when you take them home. So when kittens are born, they're born with their eyes and ears closed. So you're not gonna see anything open. You're not gonna see, um, they're gonna be very immobile. They're kind of like little jelly beans as we like to call them. They're not really gonna do too much. These are our most vulnerable population and they require care about every two hours around the clock. These are kittens that we try really, really hard to place with moms because they are so fragile, though we do send them to foster care as needed. Um, as we get closer to a week in age, we, our eyes will begin to open and usually we've doubled in weight from our birth weight. Um, by this point, their little umbel um, umbilical cord has fallen off and they start to get nice and fluffy and a little more round and pretty darn cute. And then as we get to two weeks of age, our eyes are gonna be fully open and our ears start to open. So we start to be able to hear. The, their sense of smell is also gonna to start to develop and they begin to teeth as they start to get their first set of teeth in. And then we wait three weeks old, which we like to call the kind of alien stage for kittens. As you can kind of see in the photo, they've got these nice kind of big round heads, but our body hasn't quite caught up to our head yet. And it's still a bit small. Kittens at this age can now voluntarily go to the bathroom on their own as their digestive system is developing. And we may start to introduce solid food to work on weaning them. Um, when we get to four weeks of age, that's kind of the classic like adorable baby kitten phase where all of our body is in proportion, but we still have that really nice baby face and baby features. They start to stand and walk, but they are a bit wobbly. They are kind of like little drunk people. They may want to get from point A to point B, but they may take several detours before they're able to get there. Um, when we reach five weeks of age, we start to become mischievous and they are playing and grooming themselves. They may be able to kind of run and jump a little bit. They're still not fully coordinated, but maybe instead of taking five detours to get from A to B, we only have to take two. And then we get to six weeks old, and this is about when kittens' eyes start to change color. So all kittens are born with those nice little baby blues. And for some kittens, their eyes will start to change to that like green or brown color. Um, some of them do stay blue the whole time, but it just depends. You will also see that these kittens start to get good at entertaining themselves. They are more playful. They're a lot more coordinated at this point. Um, it's important that we are working really hard with socialization for these kittens to learn that hands aren't toys. You know, we don't wanna bite. We don't wanna climb up your legs because as cute as it can be when we're little, 
as we start to get big, that's going to hurt when you, if you think about an eight pound cat trying to scale your legs. Um, you'll notice at seven and eight weeks, that's when kittens tend to get more, um, they look like functioning kittens. What you picture if you're coming to the shelter to adopt or what you think of what you had when you were growing up. These guys are nice and functioning at this point. They're close to adoption age, but not quite there yet. Um, and they've lost some of those baby features. So they still look young. However, they don't have those nice cute round um, heads and things like that. They've got more of an adult face. So another important thing when you do take bottle baby kittens home or any kitten in general is how to determine their gender. It's nice to know if you have a boy or a girl um, for naming purposes and just telling them apart and things like that. As you'll see on the picture on the left hand side, it's got a side by side comparison of a girl and a boy. Girls, their genital opening um, appears as like a vertical slit and it's going to be directly below their anus. It's very close together. There's not a big gap. For males, you're going to notice that they, um, from their anus to their little penis, it's going to be a lot larger of a gap. And then there's going to be the little piece at the bottom. So sometimes it's hard when you have little kittens and you, um, when you're just looking at one, but usually if you can compare two that look a little bit different, you're usually going to be able to tell them apart. Because as you see in the picture, it's pretty obvious when you look at two side by side, which one's the boy and which one's the girl. So now we're going to talk about caring for your newborn kittens and bottle babies. It's really important to keep these kittens warm. They are not able to regulate their body temperature at this point. And if they don't have a heating source and things like that, they're going to get cold and that can ultimately lead to failure to thrive and potentially not making it. Um, you do wanna create something like a nesting box. So whether that is you take a um, hard-sided carrier like those airline carriers and you line it with towels and put a, warm, um, a heat source in there and give them a little mommy. People also like to use plastic bins, like with a storage bin that you would use, where you do the same kind of setup. Um, you do want to give them a warm space and a cool space. So one thing you can do is what we call sock warmies. This is where you take a um, sock and fill it up with rice and you can actually heat it in the microwave and that provides a heating source. You do always want to keep your heating source under a little layer of blankets because you don't want them to be able to sit directly on it because it can potentially burn them or um, get them too hot. And then with that heat source, you do also want to have another space in the area where they can move away from the heat source. So if they get too hot, they have a cool space. If they get cold, they can go back to the heat. Having heat all over can cause the kittens to overheat and cause other issues. Again, just like getting too cold, we can get too hot, which can cause failure to thrive or resulting in the kittens not making it. You do also want to give the kittens a like mommy or a comfort object, kind of like a stuffed animal. Here at the shelter, we do send our foster parents with it's in the picture. Actually, it's a little stuffed cat and it has a little heartbeat inside. So it replicates kind of like nursing mom. But this is going to give them something to snuggle up with and something to comfort them. If you don't have this in there, you may notice kittens are more prone to crying or it may take them longer to kind of settle down after feedings. And this helps to kind of just soothe their nerves a little and get them to sleep quicker. You do want to make sure that your kittens are fed at appropriate times, which we will talk about in a few slides. Um, and you do want to make sure that you stimulate them to go to the bathroom. Like we talked about earlier, kittens aren't able to start going to the bathroom on their own until about three weeks of age. So before then, it's totally up to you to get them to go potty. Um, and then you want to make sure that you're practicing good hygiene and hand washing every single time that you handle them. These guys are little and they don't really have good immune systems. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep them nice and healthy and not spread disease. I will also add real quick, if you choose to use a plastic bin to house them in, um, like a plastic tub, uh, that is without the lid. I know that would seem obvious to most folks, yes. but that's all we need is for somebody to say that we told them to put them in a plastic bin and that we didn't tell them to leave the lid off. Yes. Uh, so. Please leave the lid off. They need to be able to breathe. So 
There are a few feeding no-nos for kittens. They aren't like babies, much like how people think that you kind of, you know, you feed a baby, you can feed anything else. You want to make sure that you are, um, that these guys have their formula heated up to an appropriate temperature, just like for this instance, like human babies, you want to be able to kind of test it on the back of your wrist and you don't want it to be hot or cold. You kind of want it to be about room temperature, but you also want to make sure that your kittens are warm. Uh, a cold kitten can lead to a sick and dying kitten. If you were to feed a cold kitten, they aren't able to properly digest their food and that can lead to their organs not functioning properly, toxins not processing through the body, you want to make sure that when you pick them up, they feel nice and warm. You can set them on a heating source. If you pick them up and they feel cold, you want to make sure that their temperatures are above 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, like we've said that kittens under four weeks of age can't regulate their body temperature. And you want to make sure that they're, they have a heating source at all times so that when you do feed them, they're able to process the food and able to digest it safely. Um, you want to make sure that you are feeding them up on their stomach. You don't want to feed them on their back like a human baby. This can cause excessive air intake and it can also cause them to aspirate. So aspiration is when they're going to inhale the fluid into their lungs and this is very dangerous because it can cause things such as pneumonia, um, upper respiratory infections, and ultimately lead to the potential of the kitten not making it. You want to make sure that they are in a prone position, which is on their stomach, like they would feed if they were nursing from a mom. We'll show you at the end in our live demonstration that position, but again, you never want to feed a kitten on their back. So newborn kittens do need to be fed kitten formula. This is formulated specifically for their dietary needs and has all the different proteins and um, minerals, vitamins, all of that good stuff that is specific to kittens. You do want to make sure the formula is warm, but make sure it's not too hot. You want to make sure to test it on the back of your wrist um, like you do with babies. And again, you want to make sure it's not too hot or not too cold. That way they're able to take the formula and properly digest it. You never want to feed a kitten cow's milk. You really don't ever want to feed a kitten anything other than kitten specific formula. Cow's milk is not formulated for kittens to digest. It does not have the proper proteins, antibodies, Cow's milk will actually cause dehydration and diarrhea in kittens, which can cause them to decline and pass away very quickly. So it's very important at all times to feed the food specific to them. At three weeks of age for kittens, you can feed them what, or start to feed them what we call slurry. This is a mixture of KMR, which is kit, the kitten formula we use, wet food and water. This is how you start to transition them onto solid food and it's the first step to getting them to eat on their own as well. So when you feed a newborn kitten, the first thing you want to do is stimulate them to go to the bathroom first. If you think about us when we wake up in the morning um, prior to breakfast, you usually want to go to the bathroom first and you usually don't really want to eat when you feel like you need to go. And it's the same thing for kittens. This is going to help to get them to eat more and be better at eating. You do want to make sure you warm the formula up. You can heat a cup of water in the microwave, but you don't want to heat up the formula itself. When you heat the formula up in the microwave, it can actually cause um, pockets of formula that is too hot, so it's varying temperatures and you can potentially scald the kitten's mouth, and it can also kill some of the proteins in the formula. Like I said, you want to test the formula on your wrist to ensure it's not too hot. You then want to make sure you're feeding the kitten on its stomach. Again, never feed a kitten on their back. You will want to make sure you use an appropriate bottle or syringe. So for our foster parents, we do provide little nursing kits and um, nipples for bottle feeding their kittens. These can be purchased at places like PetSmart and Petco, and you'll want to look for um, specific kitten bottle kits. They're little bottles. They're not too big and the nipples that come with the bottles do not have a hole pre-cut. You do have to pre-cut the hole for those nipples. Um, to do that, you would want to make an X on that nipple with scissors, so cut through an X, and you want to make sure that the formula does not pour out. It would slowly drip out. Um, formula that comes out too fast can again lead to issues such as aspiration or inhaling the fluid into their lungs. 
Um, one thing that we really love to use, though it is a little expensive, are miracle nipples. Like it says in the name, they, they are a miracle. They replicate more toward what mom's nipple is like, and the kittens are more likely to latch onto them quicker as well. Um, you want to make sure you don't underfeed your kittens. You always want to make sure their belly is full. So the way to tell if a kitten is full is if you hold them up under their armpits, you can kind of see that their belly has a nice little pear shape and it's a bit firm to the touch. A squishy belly is going to be a sign that the kitten hasn't quite eaten enough. Um, even if your kitten is fighting you, like they don't want to eat, but their belly shows that they're not full, it's important to continue feeding them safely, which we'll show you again at the end, to make sure that they are getting enough to eat. A kitten that is underfed consistently will start to lose weight, and again, it will start to decline and potentially not make it because it will lead to dehydration and lack of proper nutrition. After getting your kitten nice and full, you wanna make sure that you play with or rub them after feeding to kind of burp them. Um, they are, do sometimes take in air as they are nursing. So by doing the rubbing or playing with their backs, you can help pass that excess air so that they feel more comfortable after eating. So how often do I feed kittens? Well, it really does depend on their age. So as you can see, the younger a kitten is, the more frequently they need to be fed. Um, for kittens that are zero to one weeks of age, you're going to feed them every two hours. That is around the clock. It doesn't matter if it's day or night, things like that. It's every two hours. And then you see that as they get older, those feeding increments are going to decrease and you're able to go longer between feedings. So for a two to three week old kitten, they're gonna need to eat every three to four hours. And then as we get up to our four, five, six, seven, eight week old kittens, you'll see that sometimes you're able to actually just leave food out for them. You can feed them, you know, twice a day, but you aren't having to bottle feed them and do as much intensive care with them. We always recommend when you start out for the first time taking bottle babies that you take some of these older kiddos so that A, you get the hang of it, but B, it's not so frequent that, you know, you kind of jump in and realize that it's more than what you thought it was going to be. And then you're stuck waking up every two hours. Um, and then we recommend that as you get more comfortable with the older kittens, you can work your way down to those younger babies who need more intensive care, because then you already know what you're prepared for. You know how to fight the battles of fussy kittens or kittens who try and not eat, things like that, and you can still safely get them fed, left happy and healthy as they grow up. So what goes in must come out. Between the ages of newborn to about three to four weeks, kittens do need stimulation. We always want you to stimulate them all the way to four weeks. Though they can start to go to the bathroom on their own around three weeks of age, it's not consistent. So doing it through four weeks is gonna make sure that they always are going to the bathroom as needed. You do wanna use a moistened cotton ball and you wanna use warm water. Again, you can test it on the back of your wrist to make sure it's not too hot or not too cold. And you could also use soft tissue but you'll want to rub their little genital areas as they keep going um, to make sure that they're able to pee and poop. Kittens are going to go pee every single time that you stimulate them. However, they may only poop about once a day, and that is normal. You also want to make sure that you keep their little bottoms clean because things such as urine scald and poop building up on their back ends can help, um, can irritate their skin, and it can also, um, cause them not to feel well, which therefore makes them not want to eat and different things like that. A clean kitten can be a happy kitten. So with kitten poop, normal is going to be soft and yellow, kind of a mustard color. Um, kittens should defecate or go to the bath like poop when they're stimulated, but poop should not leak out on its own. If you are seeing that bottom picture where it's nice and liquidy, um, it doesn't have form, it's not that nice yellow color, or it's bloody, you wanna make sure you're letting either foster staff know or you're seeking medical attention right away. A kitten with diarrhea is a kitten who can go downhill and crash very fast because we can look at dehydration or potentially some other medical issues going on. Bloody poop in particular is an emergency and it's something that is going to require care right away. So if you are fostering kittens, you'll wanna make sure to contact the appropriate foster staff 
or if you are doing this on your own, you'll want to make sure to seek medical attention right away so that you can get intervention done quickly and you can get these kittens back on the right track sooner rather than later. So it is very important to weigh your kittens and make sure that they are gaining weight and doing um, well as planned. It is best to make sure that everything is going well on your new babies and doing so by tracking their weight. A kitten should gain about 10% of the birth weight every single day. You also wanna make sure you weigh in grams to better keep an eye on weight changes. As grams, you can see more of what is, um, you can see more as far as if kittens are gaining weight or losing weight, things like that. You also always wanna make sure that you are only weighing once a day at the same time every day. If you think about for yourself, or at least for me personally, I weigh myself in the morning, I may weigh one thing. And then if I weigh myself after lunch, I, weigh, I may weigh a totally different number. And so if I'm comparing those two, it may seem like I've gained or lost weight throughout the day. However, if I'm only weighing myself or the kitten at a set time every single day, you're able to consistently see changes and you're able to better gauge whether or not your kitten is losing or gaining weight. Um, you always wanna make sure that your kitten is gaining weight every day. And that's why we recommend weighing them every day because little changes such as weight loss and things like that can be an early sign that something is going wrong. And that way we can get medical intervention done sooner rather than later to better prepare to try and save these guys' lives. So you always wanna make sure to brush the kitty. A brush acts as a mother cat's tongue. We like to use little toothbrushes here at the shelter when you're brushing your kitten. Um, mama cats usually groom their kittens while they're nursing. So brushing them helps to um, simulate that and it also helps to potentially better get them to take the bottle. So if you're bottle feeding, you can also brush them while they're nursing and that can help to get them to latch quicker, nurse longer, things like that. It also helps to teach the kittens how to groom themselves. If you think about it, if no one ever showed you how to brush your hair, you may not ever figure that out. It's the same kind of concept with kittens. So when you simulate a mom grooming them, it helps to build those connections as far as how they need to groom themselves and keep themselves nice and clean. So good hygiene is very important with kittens. You wanna make sure that you clean both ends, both the mouth and the rear, after feeding in potty sessions. Formula or slur slurry left on the face of a kitten can result in skin irritation and hair loss. The formula is kind of sticky and if it stays on the face, it'll actually kind of clump the hairs together and those hairs eventually kind of just fall out. The skin gets nice and flaky underneath, things get irritated, and your kitten can start to feel kind of crummy. You also wanna make sure that you're avoiding urine scalding on the hind end. So after they go to the bathroom, you always wanna make sure that everything is nice and clean and dry. Um, like we've said, a dirty kitten or a kitten that isn't feeling too well because of urine scalding or skin irritation, it can actually affect how they're eating or their overall demeanor, you may notice that a dirty kitten, um, after you clean it up, is nursing a lot better. It's more playful, it's more alert, things like that. Because if you think about yourself again, how do you feel when you're dirty and not clean? You kind of feel a little bad. You don't feel as motivated to do things. You kind of feel gross. You just kind of want to get everything off. You want to get nice and clean. And if you didn't have that option, that would definitely affect your own behavior and it affects the, baby, the kitten's behavior as well. So sometimes, no matter how hard we try or what we do, we do experience things such as failure to thrive or fading kitten syndrome. You may think things such as not eating, despite all the supportive care you give, weight loss, dehydration, the kitten may be dull, if you look in the picture, that's a kitten whose face is down all the time, who isn't really wanting to interact with the world or move too much. Um, this could be, this could mean that there may be some um, abnormalities, whether that is, you know, something that has an upper respiratory infection and maybe we just haven't seen it quite yet. So snot coming out of the nose or an eye infection, or maybe there's something going on internally that we can't see. You always wanna make sure you check the gums. Are they pink? Pink is a good sign. White can show signs of anemia, which is um, low iron. We could look at dehydration, things like that. Um, kittens can go downhill very, can and will go downhill very quickly. 
and they do need immediate medical intervention. Um, as we said before, you want to weigh kittens daily. But again, sometimes we don't always know what is going on with these guys. We may have a cleft palate, which is going to affect how we're able to nurse and potentially how we're going to function in life overall. We could have had FIP or FBLV or panleukopenia. All of these are illnesses that do affect the kitten's quality of life and how they're feeling. And it may not be something that we are able to save and push through. Um, what's really hard about fading kitten syndrome is that sometimes these guys don't make it and we just don't know why. And a lot of that is because there's something internally going on that we just can't quite see. We do always want you to know though that no matter you know what you did or how hard you tried, if these guys don't make it. You did the best that you could. These guys got a shot at life because of you and we really want to thank you for that. I do, we do know how hard it is to lose kittens, especially when you just can't figure out why and you've tried everything you know how to. But knowing that you gave them a shot at life and that without you, they may not have had this option definitely helps to make it worth it. So on a brighter note of becoming big kids, when kittens start getting their teeth in, um, about three to four weeks of age, they'll start chewing on the nipple instead of suckling. This is when you know it's time to offer solid food and you want to offer slurry, which again is a mixture of kitten formula, wet food and water, and that's as a good starter. You may need to get them to lick it off your finger but before they start eating it out of a bowl. Um, between four weeks and six weeks of age, they should begin to readily accept solid food and you'll want to transition from the slurry to just wet food. Dry kitten food can be offered in addition to the canned food. Um, one trick that I have and a couple tricks that other people use is when you're trying to wean kittens on from just the formula to slurry, sometimes you can take their little face and just kind of dab it in the formula or the slurry really quick to get it on their lips and the kittens tend to lick it off and start to process that that's food and they may be more inclined to eat from the bowl. Also, sometimes you do have to kind of open their mouths and put the food directly from your finger into their mouths to get them to get the hang of it because sometimes even on their face, they don't always comprehend that that's something they're supposed to eat. But as you do that, you can start to get them to go from your fingers to the bowl and then eventually they'll start to eat on their own. I mean, you do always want to make sure that kittens have access at this age to a shallow litter box with plain non-clumping litter. Um, it is very important to use non-clumping litter because kittens, just like babies, like to put things in their mouth and we have had kittens try and eat the litter. Because it's non-clumping, though it isn't right for their digestive tract and it may be a little upsetting, it's not going to cause any major life-threatening issues. If a kitten were to eat clumping litter, the clumping litter can actually clump in their digestive tract and cause a blockage, which could potentially lead to major surgery, um, the kitten passing away, different things like that. So again, it's really important to use non-clumping litter with kittens. <laughs> All right. So... With kittens, even with all the supportive care that we give them, we wanna help make sure that we're building their immunity by vaccinating them. We do deworm our kittens at starting at around two weeks old, depending on when they come into the shelter. And we're gonna deworm them every two to three weeks while they're in our care. Um, we also give FVRCP, which is that combo vaccination that if you have cats yourself, you get them once a year. We start this at four weeks of age, and again, we're going to booster it every two to three weeks until they are about 16 weeks old. Rabies vaccinations are given when at four months of age, and then here we have to spay and neuter them. We always spay and neuter our kittens before they go up for adoption. Kittens have to be at least eight weeks old and two pounds to get spayed or neutered and go up for adoption. But typically, for kittens without mom, we're usually looking at hitting that two pound mark closer to the nine to 11 week eight mark. Um, whereas if you see kittens with mom, they tend to hit two pounds by eight weeks. Because as much as we try and do our best, we can never beat mom in the care she gives them. But by giving them these vaccinations and deworming so frequently, we're able to make sure that the kittens are properly building their immunity to all these different diseases that these vaccinations cover. And we're able to make sure that we aren't dealing with any parasites or things like that. So that is what we have to cover as far as caring for bottle babies. We are going to do a live demonstration. 
Um, Allison is going to run and get some things set up for her bottle babies if she hasn't already. And then she's going to show you what goes into feeding and pottying them. So I am going to show you some of my bottle babies that I currently have. Um, because I do have more than one litter, I'm going to be wearing gloves um, while caring for them. Normally I'd also wear an isolation gown, um, but because of wanting to not block, um, wanting to be careful to not block the vision for anybody, um, I will opt to change my clothes and shower instead. All right, so I do have all of my supplies. I have my um, cup of warm water, which that's like a fun little thing. I have my bottle. I did heat it up um, because once we get the babies out, they're going to be hungry and they're not going to want to wait for it to heat up. I do have some tissue for pottying. Um, I have a syringe because we're going to talk about when you have those trouble kids. And then I have the toothbrush for brushing. Now, this kitten. Um, I debated whether to bathe my kittens before um, doing this demonstration because right now my kids are on diarrhea treatment, which means we have to have a bath every day um, because they get it all over themselves and each other. And um, I decided against bathing them before this so that you could see some reality of how gross bottle baby kittens can be. Um, I am a huge fan and proponent of the kitten lady and Hannah Shaw and all she does and I couldn't figure out for the longest time how it is that her kittens always look amazingly beautiful every time she films them and it's because she bathes them ahead of time. So, um, this is Unagi. Say hello. Hello, Mr. Um, and I'm going to let you guys take a peek. We're going to get real close here. And tell me, is this a boy or a girl? You can put a note in the chat of what you think if it's boy or girl. Kind of hard to see. Um, but is a little bit dirty because, like I said, um, they're on diarrhea treatment. He, <laughs> Unagi's a boy. Um, he does have some poop up here in his hair that we're going to have to wash out. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a bath tonight. He's got poop on his paws. Um, it's really hard because him and his siblings are almost three weeks old, so they crawl all over the place and they inadvertently stimulate themselves, which then means that they're peeing on each other um, and themselves. So we have to do baths pretty regularly. Um, we'll also talk about baths real quick um, for when you are bathing kittens. Um, it's going to be really important that if you are bathing young kittens that we keep it minimal. Um, simply for the fact that they can't regulate their own body temperature, um, but we also want to make sure they don't get urine scald or irritation from diarrhea. And since they are having diarrhea, um, that's why they have to get a bath every day. Uh, you can wash them using baby shampoo or um, blue Dawn dish soap would be another suggestion um, because it's going to be nice and gentle for their skin. And we only want to wash the parts that we need to. So because his butt is mostly dirty, I'm just going to give him a butt bath and then use like a washcloth or a wet paper towel to clean uh, the poop out of his fur and also off his feet. Um, now, if he were fully covered in, in feces, then we would have to do a full bath. Um, we want to make sure that when you are giving baths, if you need to, that we are being conscientious of the ears and that we don't get it in the ears. And we also want to make sure that we don't get anything in their little eyes. Um, and we also want to make sure that they are dry and warm after the bath. Um, I know that there are some veterinarians who cringe at the thought of using a blow dryer on these guys. And that's because people sometimes have the temperature up too high and don't pay attention and actually burn and scald the kitten. Um, so what I do is when I blow dry them, because I want to make sure they're dry um, so that they don't get chilled, is um, I actually just keep my hand in between me and the blow dryer the entire time. So that way, if it's too hot for my hand, it's too hot for the kitten. Um, and then that way it can help make sure that they get dry and they stay warm. Um, and then that you are using an appropriate warming source um, so that they can stay warm afterwards. So um, he is rooting around because he is hungry. So he's trying to find everywhere he can to figure out where, where the food is. Um, but first we have to potty. Yes, we have to potty. 
Um, and since we didn't get a chance to watch the video, I will get up and close for this. Um, so I do have my tissue. And like uh, Fiona was talking about, that we want to make sure we get it moistened. Um, I actually use my water that I heat the bottle up in as a two for one. Now, because the water that I heat up is awfully hot, um, what I do is I'll actually, um, you could test it on the inside of your wrist. Um, but because they're usually wormy, my personal preference is I'll actually put it on my mouth and just check first. Remember, it's clean, so I'm not putting dirty stuff in my mouth. Um, and then that way, because your, your lips are awfully sensitive too, so if it's too hot for your lips, it's too hot for their bum. Um, and then you can do it one of two ways. Um, you can either have them stand like this and stimulate them from behind, or you can turn them over and stimulate them this way. Um, this way works well with younger kittens um, because they don't squirm as much. <laughs> Did I make you pee pee? <laughs> um, older kittens, I prefer to stand them up just because they do get wiggly and then if you got somebody who has to poop, they usually like to be able to brace their little legs so that they can poop while you're holding them. I know. And so you're just gently going to rub around um, on their genital area. I know you're making some pee pee. You know, everybody's watching you pee pee. Yeah. So you just keep moving it around. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see it on the video. Oh yeah, you can. Um, that there's some yellow urine on there. I know. So just keep moving it around until we don't have any more pee pee show up. Nope, there's still some. I know, we had to go. Oh, we're gonna need more. We need more. Um, I usually only get the tissue wet in the start just to kind of get things going because once once you break the seal, it just keeps on coming. Huh. I know. You mean not to pee pee. Are we done? I think so. Okay. So then I do have my bottle that I warmed up um, and you always want to make sure you check it on your wrist. Um, because though it may not feel too hot holding it like this, um, once I put it on here, sometimes it's actually really hot. So we'll let's make sure. Nope, that feels good. I know, come here. Um, so as Fiona mentioned, we're always going to feed on the stomach. We're never going to feed them like babies. That's a no-no. Huh, no-no. Um, feed on the stomach. Sometimes, depending on the kitten, you can get kittens. Uh, I've had some that'll sit like this. I have some who get up on my hand because they have to do this. And I've also had kittens that have to full blown stand like a person to eat their food. So just go at whatever the kitten decides. I know, are you ready? We have to show everybody how you eat. Hopefully you can see that. Yes, no? So we'll see if this kitten is hungry. First, I would like you to have the opportunity to see whether we are a boy or girl. And that is a girl. This is wasabi. So we're gonna pee pee wasabi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to go potty. Mm -hmm. Make potties. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice to get some more. Take it all down. A little bit more. A little bit more. Good job. Okay. Let's see if he's holding. We gotta get close. Oh, no. Further away. <laughs> so the folks can see. Oh, oh. Right here. Mm, a little early. I know nobody wants to eat. I know we probably have to wait. I know. I know. We tried to make sure it was right schedule. Mm -hmm. Let's try it better. All right. This is Masago. Masago has some eye issues that. Retreating, so let's clean your eye real quick. 
so all the folks can see what a beautiful kitten you are. You get it? There. I know. It's hard to be a kitten. I know. We need somebody to eat. We have to show show the people how we eat. This may not work out as planned. I may have to serve differently for you later. Let's try it. Um, Masago's a pretty good eater. He said he found the syringe. We're not done picking. Okay. Okay. Ready? Make sure. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, Masago likes to hold, put his feet up. Um, like I mentioned earlier, some kittens like to stand on their hind end. Um, a lot of kittens I see do this because for them it's natural that when they're nursing on their mom, they actually will knead with both paws um, while they suckle. Oh, is that it? Do you want more? Um, sometimes I find with kittens that we have to go back, that some of them prefer a second round. No? Okay. Um, some of them prefer a second round, so we just have to see. Um, and some of them don't. And then, when we're all done, we brush the baby. I don't know if you can hear him purring. Sometimes um, after I'm done feeding kittens, I'll be sitting in my lap and I brush them and they'll usually start falling asleep. It's really cute. Ooh, I like to brush the baby. Mm. All right, now we have to show them here. Yeah. Evie. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, oh baby boy, oh, Evie needs a butt bath. Um, sometimes you have kittens that are difficult to feed and then we have to um, make sure that they eat uh, so that they don't lose weight and so that they don't get hungry. So um, we're going to start with cleaning the potty and Evie with his very dirty butt. Hey you, come back. Come back. But I'll show you some different ways of dealing with difficult kittens when we do have to kind of do some horse feeding. Oh, your butt is dirty. We have to have a bath. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the paper towel. That's all paper. We're not going to eat it here. Oh no, do you have the poopies? Maybe? Yes, no? No? Okay. Yeah, Evie also has poop on his paws that we have to wash off. Um, so we'll try with the bottle and see if he will eat. And EB, I don't think, is just full. He is not a good eater at all, and so feeding time is not fun for either of us um, because he doesn't want to eat. He used to drink from a bottle, um, and then when he got diarrhea and wasn't feeling well, he just decided he wasn't going to eat anymore. So um, we haven't been able to get him to eat from a bottle since, so instead we have to resort to um, some force feeding, which often will be the case when you have um, bottle baby kittens in the beginning. Um, usually the younger kids, um, less than a week old or so, will latch pretty well. Um, those that are about two weeks um, or older, um, I don't know, there's a little bit of an attitude. They're kind of like, you're not my mom! And then they don't want to eat um, for a day or two and they give you a really hard time. Um, and then you just have some kids that, that lose their weird suckling. Um, and I think that's what happened with Evie. And then once we start weaning, that he'll be able to um, eat just fine. So when we do the force feeding, we utilize a burrito. So that's where we're going to not cover their face. We're going to wrap them up in a tiny little kitchen burrito. I know. I know. 
That's so awful. Um, and we want to make sure it's not too tight that they can't breathe, but we also want to make sure it's tight enough to keep their limbs in there because the whole point of the burrito is so that they can't like flail all over. Um, and when we're doing force feeding, we're going to use a syringe instead of the bottle. One, so that you have better control. I'll let you out for a minute. One, so that you have better control over how fast the flow is um, so that we don't overfeed them and aspirate them. Um, and the other one is so that you can better measure. It's a lot easier to measure on a syringe how much they've been taken versus on the bottle, especially when you're trying to figure out how much they're eating. All right, kid, it's your least favorite time. I don't know, bath time might be just as bad. Grab the kids in the burrito. I know. We we'll have to show everybody how we do this. So, with it, it's just going to be a little drop at a time, making sure that they swallow it. Oh, I know that was that one was a little quick. Oh, I know. I'm not good at. I'm not having good control right now because now it's all over your face. I know it's so hard to be kid. Um, and then yeah, they will fight you because they said you're not my mom. I know. We have to eat. That's how we grow. <laughs> um, the downfall of this, it's incredibly time consuming um, because you do have to make sure they're eating enough. Um, for somebody Evie's age, he should be eating between 10 and 14 mils, um, milliliters, excuse me, and this syringe is three. So that means we have to do several syringes in order to get there. Um, and again, it can be very time consuming. What's <laughs> What's um, good about using um, a nipple on the syringe is that if at some point they decide they're tired of this method, that they can start suckling on it and still get what, what it is that they need. I know. I know. Well, look at your cute little face. I know, it's so hard to be a kitten. Um, using your thumb gives you better control than your forefinger, which is how I ended up squirting too much earlier. No, this is how we grow. Um, so that's the gist of it. We've gotten through, um, it looks like a little bit over one cc, so you can see that this does take quite a bit of time. Um, but the other option is to let them starve, and then they're going to crash um, and, and likely pass away. So we don't want that. Um, we're also not going to consume up a ton of time on this video with force feeding him. Um, I can finish that when we're done. But um, anyway, so... That, oh, you want the brushy? E.B. likes his brushy. He does. Um, so that is the gist of um, bottle baby kittens and making sure that everybody gets fed and pottied and stays clean. Uh, like I said, we do have to do a bath tonight for my clan because um, we're having some diarrhea struggles um, that they're on treatment on so that we can get that taken care of. Yeah. See you and say bye to everyone. Say bye-bye. Thanks for watching!